Hi, my name is Beth Massey, and today I'm going to show you how to connect to an existing database using Visual Studio LightSwitch. LightSwitch is a new development tool for building business applications for the desktop and the cloud. LightSwitch makes it easy to create data-centric, rich internet applications. So I'm going to create a new application called Adventure, and we're going to connect to the AdventureWorks sample database for this example. So let's go ahead and file a new project, and I'm going to name this Adventure. Click OK. Now in the previous videos we've been creating new tables here, but what I want to do instead is attach to an external data source. Now LightSwitch will allow you to connect to a variety of different types of data sources. You can connect to a database, a SharePoint, or a custom WCF RIA service. So for this video we're going to attach to an external database that is managed separately outside of LightSwitch. Okay, so click database and then next. Next thing we're going to need to do is connect to the database. All right, so I have the instance or the server name is SQL Express. That's where I have this database. Whoops. There we go. And it's named AdventureWorks LT 2008. Click OK. Now what LightSwitch is doing is it's reading the schema of the database and it's going to um, ask you which tables should be imported. I'm going to import everything except this build version and error log table. Okay, so I've got basically customers, their addresses, products, and orders. Okay, so let's click finish. Okay, so now we've imported the schema. So now what we need to do is we need to make a couple modifications to this on the light switch side so that when we create screens, they become a little bit more meaningful to the user. So for instance, let's navigate up to, um, customers have multiple addresses here, and let's navigate up to customer first. Now you'll notice that what you can do is you can say specify here's an email address is coming in as a string because it's being stored as a string in the database. However, LightSwitch will let you make the modifications to the schema um, here on the model side, which means on the LightSwitch side, make you, let you make changes here um, to these different business types when in actuality these business types are really stored as strings in the database, so you can go ahead and change them here on the model. Okay, so I'm going to make that an email address and a phone number. Notice that LightSwitch isn't allowing us to change the fundamental base type though. You can't change this to say an integer. Okay. All right, so I'm going to change this at email address and phone number. What I'm also going to do is there's a lot of um, fields in this table that are not, you shouldn't display them on the screen. So I'm going to go through and just select the uh, different types of fields that I don't want to display, uh, like the password. Okay, and we'll un basically uncheck this display by default here in the appearance section. Okay, so I'm just going to go through and do a couple more of these. Uh, the row good is used for the versioning of the row, modified date. We don't need to display any of that stuff. That's all filled in automatically by the back end. Okay, so now that we've got that together, um, the other thing I want to do is I want to highlight customer and I want to specify a different summary property, not the title, but let's just say like uh, last name of the customer. Okay. So now we've got that. You can also you can also move fields around, and this will basically determine how they are displayed on screens. So you can go ahead and move them around on the light switch side here. Um, it, that basically just shows the fields in that certain order on the screen by default. Okay, so the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to this uh, um, sales order header because we're going to create a uh, ordering screen here. So. You'll notice that the sales order header also has some additional fields that we don't want to display. So the ID, the revision number, um, we do want the order date, the due date, the ship date. We don't need a status uh, display here. Um, the online order flag is coming in as the display name online order flag. Let's instead, let's display this online order question mark because that's going to end up being a checkbox. It's a Boolean, true or false. Okay, so um, a couple other things to note here that's coming through. You'll see that there's a subtotal, a tax amount, a freight, and a total due. Now these all are decimals, stored as decimals in the system, but what we want to do is display these as monetary values. So we'll select money for that. Okay, and again, the road good, I don't want that or this either. 
Okay, now you'll see that there's a couple different addresses, right? So one's a shipping address and one's a billing address. So what I want to do is I actually want to change the name of this navigation property. You'll notice we have two addresses going into the address table here. So I want to change this to uh, ship address, okay, and this will be bill, billing address, okay? Okay, that will make it look a little bit better on the screen. Okay, cool. So now what we need to do is um, I need to specify a one more thing um, up here where we have the, um, let's see, where is it? Ship method. Okay, ship method is a string, but there's only a couple different types of methods that we want to um, the user to choose from. So I'm going to make this a choice list. Okay, so over here in the uh, general properties area, click on choice list, and we'll go ahead and just make this like G for ground, ground shipping and maybe like error, okay? We could put any values we want in here. Okay, cool. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to the uh, customer address. So we have customers have many addresses. So there's a customer address table here. Okay, I'm also wanting to uh, uncheck a couple of these display by default here. Um, the address type, we could make this also a, as for shipping. Oops, <laughs> my keyboard's going crazy here. Actually, I'm going to store the whole word sh shipping. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Okay, shipping, um, billing, and I don't know, maybe you could just say main office. Whoop. something like that. Okay, so you can add choice lists to restrict what users can put into that field. Okay, so um, a couple of things we're going to take off again, the row GUID and the modified date. That's like for the row versioning. Okay, so that looks good. So now, basically, when you import an external schema, you're going to have to make modifications like that so that um, when users see the screens, it makes a little bit more sense to them. Okay, so don't display fields that are internal fields, and then you'll want to probably change a couple of them around. All right, so now I'm ready to add some screens. So I'm going to go to the Screens node down here um, in our Solution Explorer. Right-click and add a new screen. Uh, the first screen will do a search data screen on our customers. Okay, so search customers. Uh, an additional screen we're going to want is a customer detail screen. Okay, so I'm also going to include the addresses and the order headers for the customer detail. So when we click on a customer in that search screen, it'll pull up all of this information. Okay, so it's like a one-to-many. Finally, I want to add uh, orders too, so I'm going to add a uh, detail screen for the order header and we're going to include the order details. Cool. So you can keep adding screens as needed for all of the uh, tables here that you've got imported from this data source. Okay, let's just go ahead and hit a five real quick right now um, to run and build this and run this and see what we have. Okay, so let's go ahead. Here's our customers. We can search for customers. Okay, and what we can do then is we can go and edit the customer. We've got a customer screen here, and we can see there's their customer addresses and their orders. Okay, then when we click on their orders, we've got an order screen that we created, and here's the order details. All right, now a couple things. Um, related to the AdventureWorks database specifically. Um, you'll notice that you'll see there's this total due here. This is actually a field that is stored. It's actually a calculated field on the SQL Server itself. Okay, it's a feature SQL Server. So it's actually getting calculated on the back end. So if we had like tax amount, $80, you'll notice that it didn't really, it didn't update on the screen. It's not going to update until we save. Okay, now you can go ahead and um, in a previous video I showed you how to create calculated fields and you can go ahead and add one to the model here on the light switch side and then that would give you the immediate feedback on the screen instead of doing it here on the back end. Let's go ahead and see how we can take a look at the schema and the data on the back end through Visual Studio. So let's go ahead and, and close this down. Oh, I made a change so we'll go ahead and save that. Okay, so if we take a look at, if we go to File, um, 
view, actually if we go to view and then you go to server explorer, this will open up a window and it has just a data connection sitting here. Well this allows you to connect to the database as well, so an external database in this case. So put in your your um, server name, SQL Express, there we go, and then I'm going to select the database that we're importing here. Okay, and now you can see, I'm going to close this real quick, now you can see the tables here, okay, and you'll notice that if we go to the sales order header, you'll see that not only is the total due a calculated field on the back end, so is the sales order number. I didn't actually put that number in, it, it, it would be generated for me. Okay, so, so basically what we could do is we can actually um, view the schema, right click, and then you can go ahead and open the table definition if you'd like to see the exact schema of these, of what, how these work. So if you go down to total due, you'll see down here in the column properties that there is, a, is basically a, 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 a computed value. All right, now um, be careful when you, when you attach to a database through the Server Explorer and you make changes, you're making real-time changes to whatever database you're attached to. Okay, so typically when you're creating a LightSwitch application against an external data source, you're going to be working with a copy of the real data. You're not going to be working with the production database. Okay, so that is, you, you guys need to be very careful when you're modifying the schema um, through the Server Explorer. Now, you can modify the schema though, and let's see how let's see how, let's see how you would update um, your light switch application based on some schema changes here. Okay, so let's say I was database administrator, or I'm the database guy, and I'm going in and I need to add a new field to customer. So let's go ahead and sh um, open the table definition for customer, and here's all our fields. And say I'm going to add a new field, so let's just call it new field. We'll make this a varchar. 50, and we'll just allow nulls for now. Okay, so once I save, there we go, I have updated the schema of the database now, and I have this new field on this table. So now what we can do is we go back over to our light switch project and select the data source, right click, and then say update data source. And now light switch is going to reread the schema. And it'll ask us which objects we want to import, which tables. Okay, I'm going to basically re-import all of the same tables we were working with and click finish. Okay, so now I'm going to move that out of the way. So now when we go back to our customer, let's go and navigate up to customer, you'll see here that there's the new field sitting here. Okay, so now we can go into our, say our uh, our search screen or our customer detail screen and we can add that field let's go ahead and put it on this column add that field to the screen okay so new where is it new field here it is down here at the bottom okay so we go ahead and run this we sh should see our new field Okay, so let's go ahead and open up a customer, and there it is, the new field, okay? Now, what if we remove fields? Now, this is pretty cool. I'm going to close this. Now, when we remove fields, now you got to be careful when you remove fields from a database because you're going um, to be trashing the data in that field, right? So, I didn't actually care about that field. So, let's go back to our, this is our designer, okay, so our schema designer. I'm going to delete the field. Right. Then I'm going to save it. Okay. Now that just modified the schema again. Okay. Now, when we right-click and update the data source, LightSwitch is going to be smart enough to see which fields are, have been removed. And then you'll see this little exclamation point warning you. Okay. So when you hover over this, it basically says this columns on this table have been removed from the database. The corresponding fields on all associated entities will be removed on the associated entity. Now, when a field on an, on an entity, when you remove a field on an entity, what actually happens is it also removes, it goes through all your screens and it removes that field from the screens. So you never have to worry about, you know, updating your screens based on a field that you removed. Okay, so if I go back into our customer detail, you'll notice that there's no more new field, okay, and our, our 
because it's gone from customers as well. Okay, so light switch really helps you out when it when working with external data. Just keep in mind it's up to you to manage the schema changes outside of light switch. All light switch does with an external data source is um, keep things in sync. Okay, so when you update the data source, it will look at new fields and bring them in, and it will remove any old any fields that have been removed. Okay, so that's how you use an existing data source with Visual Studio Light Switch. Thanks for watching.